Did I mention yet that databases don't understand human language? Well, if I didn't, databases don't understand human language. They can only match strings of characters that you type in to strings of characters that they find in their contents. That includes the full text of the articles or ebooks, and metadata such as the title, author, title of the journal, and things like that. All it's doing is matching what you put in with what it has. So in order to communicate with the database, you really need to break things down for it. When you start out, you have a topic that may actually be the intersection of a number of different topics. Separate them out. Geometry in the Egyptian pyramids equals geometry plus Egyptian pyramids. Preventable emergency room fatalities equals emergency rooms plus fatalities plus preventable. Impact of zebra mussels in the Hudson River on native mussel populations equals zebra mussels plus Hudson River plus native mussels plus ecology or population. The divisions won't always be clean. Is preventable fatalities one concept or two? How about Egyptian pyramids? It's okay not to be sure. You can try it both ways and see what works better. Also, once you go to the next step and start thinking up synonyms and related terms, it will be easier to see whether it makes sense to keep it as one concept or break it down further into two concepts. Also, sometimes you'll wonder if an idea like effects or consequences should be its own topic. Start by leaving it out. Once you run your search and look at the results, you'll know whether you need to add it. Until you get to that point, keep both possibilities in mind. So now that you have your concepts broken down, it's time for the next step, which is thinking up synonyms and related terms. Let's check back with the idea that databases can only match strings of characters that you input with strings of characters in their contents. So if you just put in fatalities and some articles use the word deaths instead, you're not going to find those articles. That is why you need to put yourself in the mindset of those authors and think, what are all the different ways I could have named or described the topic? Brainstorm those synonyms and related terms. So for fatalities, you have deaths and maybe also mortality rate or even lethal incidents. Who knows? It will depend a lot on the subject area you're researching. To keep track of all those synonyms and related terms, use a concept chart. At the bottom of the page, there's a link to one you can use. You can also just draw a simple grid on a piece of paper. So in your concept chart, which is nothing more than a grid or table, you'll have a column for each of the concepts you identified. So all your concepts will be going across. In each column be beneath the concept, you'll write down all the synonyms and related terms you can think of for it. So all your different words for the same concept will be going down. Here's an example of a concept chart for the research topic, Effects of Anti-Bullying Programs on the Self-Esteem of Adolescent Girls. Notice that I have three columns for my three concepts, Anti-Bullying Programs, Adolescent Girls, and Self-Esteem. Under anti-bullying programs, my synonyms and related terms are just a list of specific anti-bullying programs. Maybe an author wrote a topic about the boomerang project, but never said the actual phrase anti-bullying program. I don't want to miss that article. Under adolescent girls, I have different ways to say the same thing. Teen girls, female teenagers, adolescent females, and so forth. And under self-esteem, I have self-image and self-worth which aren't quite the same, but are very similar. So you can think of three different ways to come up with synonyms and related terms. One, actual synonyms and near synonyms, like girl and female. Two, related but not exactly the same ideas, like self-esteem and self-image. And three, specific cases, like Boomerang Project, which is one example of an anti-bullying program. It's all right for this to be messy and uncertain. This is not the kind of thing where there are clear-cut answers and a one-size-fits-all method. It involves trial and error. Also, while there are steps, sometimes you need to skip a step or repeat a step or take a little detour before going back to the steps. Still, it's not chaos. You know what you're looking for, and this tutorial gives you the guidelines to find it. Every time you search, you can tell if you're getting closer to what you want or further away from it, and you can fine-tune what you're doing. With practice, it will get faster and easier. But even when you're lost and confused, remember that expert researchers are going through the exact same processes.